another another less of uh, usual uh, usual out of uh, or not statistics not being composed by uh, by statistical office, which is beverage curve. This essentially captures the relationship between uh, between unemployed unemployed people and uh, free uh, uh, vacancies, so jobs that are not filled. And uh, just uh, to remember, this is where we stand before the crisis in 2008. So we had something like one, over 150,000 vacancies for something a bit more than 300,000 people, uh, unemployed people. And keep in mind, this is 2008. The economy is not generating any real overheating signals. The core inflation was, I believe, at 2. 4, which is hardly hardly something to really worry about and uh, the top uh, line of inflation was still a bit uh, increased by uh, uh, by oil price hike you may remember the oil can go also up and uh, and that's it so now we here we are at the bottom of recession in 2013 and from that time we moved steadily here to this uh, to this uh, place which is a little bit like in a, in a midway from from a <coughs> peak of uh, an, of before crisis business cycle, but I must say I, I don't think that was a real peak. We we probably could have been even higher, and uh, the bottom of uh, of Great Recession. We are sort of in a, in a midway from according to beverage curve. And with that goes uh, the simple fact that finally we see wages in healthy positive numbers. Again, don't, don't forget uh, in discussing whether people are entitled to three or four percent uh, wage increases that we also had a period in which wages were, were decreasing in, in this economy. And uh, well, inflation is uh, of course still, still pretty low. Maybe it's worthwhile to have a look on what's uh, driving our inflation numbers, and uh, they are driven down by currently by uh, by this grey component mostly, which are fuel prices. The rest uh, is a bit of administrative and uh, food prices. We had a very good harvest, which of course is not a bad thing to have uh, in 2000, uh, 2014. It still drives our price food prices down. The rest is uh, is driving them up, but altogether, even the domestic pool, domestic demand-driven pool on prices is slightly above one or around one, which doesn't really sound like like a top uh, inflation. So, and industrial prices, uh, industry producer prices are just reinforcing our feel that whatever we import uh, contains a deflation in it. Uh, that's. Uh, what we do expect for the uh, for next uh, six quarters, say, well, we expect uh, reasonable GDP growth, maybe not that stellar as, uh, as this year, but still something above, uh, above two, closer to three most of the time. Inflation heading slowly but steadily to the, to the target, and uh, in this we are supported by core inflation which is already above one, which is one point <coughs> two, I believe, the last like, this number. And the uh, same uh, interest rates that will be essentially at zero till the beginning of 2017, and then we probably will be able around in, in this period to, to end use of the floor and return to some more normal interest rate levels. In numbers, let me just point out, uh, we still do not expect any huge changes in both in current account for trade balance. We are doing just fine, but why should we be doing a lot better? Government deficit. Here I've seen some headlines commenting our, our relatively optimistic forecast in 2017. It's more a methodology glitch. Uh, like it's, uh, in, in, in EU central banks are assumed to calculate fiscal forecast by what is in law. And we know that 2017 is going to be election year, big election year. Elections will start this fall and they will keep going in this country for about a year and, and something. 
and it's very unrealistic to assume that, uh, that we will have zero. Saying this, uh, we are a country of, of uh, I would say, a relatively high fiscal conservatism, so I would not expect any, any really significant change above zero, but, uh, but of course, uh, zero it's not going to be. All right, uh, well, that's it. Uh, perhaps I should uh, reiterate the, the board statement uh, from our last meeting. Uh, we think we will keep the uh, exchange uh, rate uh, floor uh, till the beginning of 2017 when we sort of expect to, uh, to be over, uh, over the period of use of uh, non-standard monetary policy tool. As to check economy, and, uh, well, we are living on a, in, a, in a relatively nice time economically. I mean, our major our, our supply factors have moved up, driven by low price of oil and, uh, and other factors, and that's, uh, that's not bad for, for industrial-based economy in which uh, the share of industry and GDP increases over time. So that's a uh, that's nice work for us producers to be in, and hopefully we will be able to enjoy it a bit. And with this, I will, I will turn to another old uh, pet joke. Uh, well, as most of you know, this uh, Gimelsinian picture of myself is here to underline the significance of smiling pleasant faces. That's mine. And also to enable those of you who would like to ask me a quest smart question after I leave the, uh, this place, which happens always to me that I want to ask the smart question after somebody leaves. So please uh, send me an email, and uh, this is, I promise, the last bad joke. I'm not assuring you I will answer all your questions, but I'll make somebody answering them anyway. <laughs> Thanks. So, please, any question? I was afraid that it would be a completely new experience of Q&A for me. Right. Um, is the mic on? Can you hear me? Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you about the capital formation because the, uh, the graph you showed showed a very positive capital formation basically for the last uh, 20 years or so. But um, if I return to my favorite questions about the Prox Stock Exchange, uh, in the last 22 years, the Prague index has gone down by about 14%, while um, major developed indexes have gone up by somewhere upwards of 300%. And I uh, wanted to ask you why you think that is and what you think about it. I think it's mostly driven from abroad this, uh, this time. Uh, I, I don't have any, any huge, strong answer for this because you know that Happily or unhappily, uh, we are a bank-based uh, economy, not, uh, not stock-based or a kitty-based economy. But uh, but I think it's uh, those are mostly mostly headwinds from abroad that are now driving the stock exchange. So, so do you think the I'm not saying it doesn't matter, but I am uh, I'm simply saying we do not uh, compare with our Chinese colleagues. We uh, we pay a bit less attention relatively to Black Stock Exchange, yes. which is quite understandable because we do not have debt to, uh, of, uh, of private companies at, uh, at uh, multiples of, of GDP and we do not have a uh, group of, uh, of uh, well uh, be or bear doing uh, citizens uh, after they have been banned from Macau playing on a, on a, on a stock market. Any more questions, please? Yeah, I, I see the gentleman there. I don't know how to actually lie. Uh, thank you for all the predictions. Uh, what I was missing was uh, prediction of FX rate. Uh, because Excuse me, I, I don't hear you. Ah, okay, sorry. So I do not want to answer the question, but I don't hear you. <laughs> Thank you for all the predictions. What I, what I 
was missing to me was prediction of FX rate, which shall be probably incorporated. So what do you expect will happen after the interventions are probably ceased in 2017? FX rate? FX rate, yeah. FX rate. <laughs> I don't know. Tell me how much we buy uh, during this year and beginning of next year, and I tell you what's going to happen. Because there are essentially two things that can happen. Mostly only Czech uh, sort of uh, Euro producers, uh, meaning export and, uh, and other companies will, buy, will, will sell us euros. In that case, it's uh, very likely that sooner or later the, the Kron as convergence will, is, is returning already, may, may return to slower pace of, uh, of long term uh, strengthening than, than before the crisis, but still still to this, but not in a, in a dramatic way, because uh, during the, these three years a lot seeped in uh, nominal, uh, nominal values uh, of, of equal exchange rate. On the other hand, if, uh, if uh, there is going to be a strong overbuy, overbuy of crown, uh, if, if, uh, if there will be a strong, uh, uh, if we buy much more, let's put it like this, due to, due to uh, mainly hot money, this may get much more interesting because uh, we are econ an economy that typically sort of produces cash flow wise something like 5 billion euros, seven with EU funds, part of which is then spent on investment most of the time, meaning uh, there will be no euros on the market. And we, we had it in, at the beginning of 2014. When, uh, when everybody sort of expect us to uh, not to keep the floor as we promised and, and with the result that in the beginning of 2014 uh, the exchange rate of Czech Kron went, went relatively sharply down because everybody was looking for euros. This time the only one having euros in such situation is going to be central bank and I'm somehow skeptical to its willingness to to sell, to sell it at a loss, and after all, that would just weaker exchange rate would just sort of guarantee that uh, the interest rate will normalize sooner. So, so that will be completely different situation, eh? and uh, and I don't really know what's uh, going to happen. So far, we think mostly, as a matter of fact, uh, most of uh, of trades we do are not speculative ones. Those are those are just companies, and, and as such, it doesn't really. I don't know. But if you tell me what, to, what you assume our, our increase of reserve is going to be in January 2017, I can answer that. Please, another question? Lovely. Is Mike going there? There is a lady. I guess I'm 